Okay. Well, welcome. Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us for our program. My name is Helen Liu, and I'm the Programming and Partnerships Manager at Cary Library. Before we begin, I want to take a moment to thank the Cary Library Foundation. Their support enables us to bring programs like today's event to you. I would also like to thank the public libraries in Bedford, Belmont, and Brookline for partnering with us on this program. This program is being recorded and would be posted to the library's YouTube channel for 30 days per request of our speaker. If you have any questions, please submit them to the Q&A or chat, and Jamie will answer them as best she can um, as we go along. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker. You may have seen her on Morning TV or read her newest bestseller, Keep This, Toss That, which is available to borrow through the Minuteman Network. Jamie Novak also hosts a 10-minute podcast and has a popular YouTube show. She spends most days presenting virtual programs on how to declutter with a humorous twist. When not on the computer with her dog, Holly, at her feet, Jamie is drinking iced tea while clipping out recipes she'll never prepare. Be sure to visit jamienovak.com to find out the Toss It item of the day. Welcome, Jamie. We're ready to start decluttering our homes and check off that box on our New Year's resolution list. Yes, let's do it, Helen. Thank you so much for making our program possible. And again, to the foundation. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking your time out of your evening and spending it here with us. I'm delighted that you are feeling energized to declutter. We've turned the calendar page. Fresh start. It's time to just get it done. And Helen and I were chatting before our program began and um, it was mentioned like we had this day where maybe their weather wasn't great. And so maybe if you experience that, it depends on where you're tuning in from, but you're like, oh, well, it's a perfect excuse to stay indoors and declutter. And you've got all day to do it. And let me know if this sounds familiar. Because you have all day to declutter, well, you'll get started after breakfast. So we have maybe some, you know, delicious pancakes and we have to clean up from breakfast. And then we've got a little bit of time where we could get something done before lunch, but then it's basically lunchtime. So why don't we wait until after lunch? But then after lunch, maybe we want to take a little nap or read a book. And so then we do that and now it's practically dinner time. So we should probably wait until we have happen. And when it doesn't happen, it may be because we have booked too much. We've planned on a big chunk of time where you've got to have a lot of energy. You've got to make a ton of decisions. And my best guess is if you've dedicated a lot of time and don't see a lot happening, you're going to love the concept that I'm going to share with you tonight because we're going to work in 10 minutes bite sizes. And I know what you're thinking, Jamie, wait a minute. I have an entire hall closet or utility closet or some sort of cabinet where I have stashed everything. I've got coats, coats we haven't worn, boots and gloves, single gloves, hats I don't like, scarves that are itchy, and all the bags. Anyone else collecting all the bags? the paper shopping bags, the reusable shopping bags, and tell me I'm not alone. Anyone else saving the clear plastic bags? The ones that when you buy like a set of linens or a shower curtain, let us know in the chat, does anyone else save these bags? I cannot be alone. Let me know. There's 137 of us here tonight. I'm not alone, right? Make me feel better. Okay, great. So I love it that if you kind of have this space where we've shoved everything and you're like, but Jamie, 10 minutes, I can't clean that out. I can't organize my entire home in 10 minutes, right? Well, here's the thing. We can do small, significant steps that add up to big success. And that's what I'd love to share with you during our time together this evening. Oh my gosh, so many of you are sharing. Thank you so much that I am not alone in my bag collection. I'm guessing a lot of us collect bags and so many other things, which is why we're all here tonight to talk about the solutions. Hopefully you have a pen and paper nearby. If you do, you might want to start your notes with today's date. So you'll want to jot down, it is 2024. It's January 8th, it's 2024. So when you look back at these notes and you're like, what was I doing? 
what year was this? Why did I write this down? You'll have some point of reference that this is our program brought to us by the awesome Carrie Library. And my name is Jamie Novak, and that's just how it is on the video. And you can stay in touch with me um, there after our time together, jamienovak.com. All right, so the chat is open. Uh, so is the Q&A. But if you've raised your hand, unfortunately, um, that may have been to say, hey, I have a bag collection too. But if it was raising your hand to ask a question, we'd really appreciate you popping it into either the chat or the Q&A. And that's where we'll be able to see it. All right, and uh, we'll answer questions as we go along if they pertain to where we are in our time. If they're gonna take us off topic, I'll try to get to all those remaining questions at the end of our program. So you've started your notes, you have the date, you have it's Keep This Toss That. That is the name of the program. It also is the name of my newest book published with Reader's Digest. As Helen said, available at the library and wherever books are available. Written in checklist format in oversized font. So um, I hope you love it. I took from those pages to create our program tonight. So let's jump right into a resource you're going to want to know. And that is givebackbox.com. So it's give, G-I-V-E, back, B-O-C-K, box, B-O-X, givebackbox.com. I'm going to pop it in the chat for you so you'll be able to see it. And this is um, an organization that coordinates the items that you have to share. And the really neat thing about this is that you can fill any box that you already own. So if you received maybe gifts over the holiday season and they came in boxes, or you did a little bit of online shopping and you have some cardboard boxes, you can fill any box that you own with items that you have to donate. And then you can bring your box or boxes to your nearest Kohl's store. Now, here's the trickiest part. If you're going to do this, you're gonna fill your box up with up to 25 pounds of items. And I'm gonna tell you what they won't take, but they'll take a lot of things. You're going to put those items in the box up to 25 pounds, and you're gonna bring the box or boxes over to Kohl's. Now you're going to have to go probably towards the back of the store so that you can drop these off nearby like the UPS drop off. And now you're in the Kohl's store. The most important part is to walk right out of the Kohl's store without buying anything new. And I think that might be the most difficult part of this entire project. So I would invite you to, if you'd like, take advantage of givebackbox.com. You can also mail your box through the post office, but it's probably easiest to drop it off at Kohl's. They will cover the cost of shipping, but if you're going to be in the Kohl's area, it would probably be very convenient. They would love clothing, shoes, accessories. However, no glass, no large kitchen appliances like countertop appliances and things. No underwear and no socks. It's just too personal for them. No bedding or towels. However, your local humane system society would love to get your bedding and towels. The volunteers are cleaning. And I mean, the little puppies and kitties, it's cold in the cages. They're going to curl up in your pool towel, even if it's not in the best condition. And no books. So givebackbox.com, you're thinking office supplies, um, extra file folders and binders and things. You're thinking about home decor items and items from your closet, um, but no books, no bedding, no undergarments, and no large electronics or kitchen things. Toys are welcome, as are stuffed animals. So up to 25 pounds, you bring your box into Kohl's and they will label it and ship it off. So there we go. And yes, Wendy, a terry robe, the animal rescue would love to get that. Terry cloth is very absorbent and um, it would be lovely to send off to them. Yes, so um, that's probably one you have to bag up and drop off to the Humane Society or the pet shelter yourself. Or if your local pet store has adoptions in store, 
oftentimes they'll take it there as well. And of course, don't forget our library because the library, the carry library, the friends have a sale. And if you have books that are in good condition, they would love to get them. Unfortunately, they can't take textbooks. And I just shared with you givebackbox.com, but they can't take textbooks either. So who can take textbooks? You can take a look at, this is a little long one, so just get ready to write it down, but it's betterworldbooks.com. So it's like good, better, best, better, B-E-T-T-E-R, better. So better world and then books and books does have an S at the end betterworldbooks.com. And when you get there at the very bottom, it'll say find a drop off and you can type in your zip code. And this works in all 50 states, but it just depends on where they have their, you know, drop boxes located. They're usually in parking lots, sometimes of libraries, sometimes of grocery stores. All right. So a few different resources to start us off. I have more to come. So don't worry about that. Of course, um, Helen already let you know that I love clipping out recipes that I never prepare. So towards the end of our time together, we'll talk about paperwork because I know that is one of the biggest challenges. But for now, let's get started with sort of a step-by-step -step process for room by room. And I say room by room, but I know some of us may be in a studio apartment, so there's not so many rooms, but there's different areas. Um, you may be in a large home with a bunch of garages, with no cars in any of the garages. Uh, so it just really depends where you're tuning in from. And of course, these will also, the steps will work in an office space at home or outside your home as well. So I cannot wait to share the steps with you. And then we'll go through kind of room by room what we're looking for in each room. And of course, my favorite part of the fact that this is virtual is instead of meeting in a meeting room where all we could do is take notes, because we're joining online, you can take action. We're going to have a little live jumpstart where I'll invite you to tidy up with me during this program. Of course, it's not required. It's just highly suggested. But if you'd like to, I can't wait to have you join me. All right. So let's get started. Thank you so much to everyone who's sharing resources in the chat. It is awesome. So everyone go ahead and take a look. And of course, the replay will be available. So you can always go back and catch anything that you may have missed. All right, so we begin by choosing a room. Which room? I don't know, which room? I like to start in the bathroom. And that's because it's a smaller space usually. Um, it's usually easier to make decisions because stuff's either good or not good. There's no real like sentimentally attached to my nail clippers usually. Um, so the bathroom can be great, but you might say bedroom. We've got a couple of votes for the bedroom. You might say entryway because it's sort of your welcome home. Kitchen's a good one. Living room, of course, bedroom and clothes closet. So there's so many options. And right now at step one, we can get overwhelmed. Well, I could do one of seven rooms and I don't know which one. So, oh, well, I'll, when I figure it out, I'll, I'll get to my decluttering. And then we never figure it out. And we don't get to the decluttering. So if you're stuck, I'm inviting you to start in the bathroom. If you know you'd like to begin another place, then go right for it. So from that room, we really need to now narrow into one category or just one space of that room. Because again, the room itself can now feel overwhelming. Maybe the whole home felt overwhelming, even choosing a room with so many different categories can also feel very overwhelming. So what if we were to narrow down our choices and just pick one category? So let's say it's sort of like a bedroom slash office, like Barbara's saying in the chat. Well, again, multiple categories. So maybe you say, okay, I'd love to get the top of the desk cleared off, which sounds like a great place to start until you realize wait a minute, there's no place for that stuff to go, which is why it's on the top of the desk, because the storage space is overflowing. So maybe I start in the storage space. Or maybe you've got stuff piled in a corner of a room, some things that need to be returned, or maybe some lingering holiday decorations that quite didn't get put back into storage. So once we choose our room and decide on a particular category or space from the room, we really have a very narrow focus that we can work on in, does everyone remember? 10 minutes. 
Now we won't be finished probably unless it's a small space like one little drawer, but we will have gotten started. And I think for a lot of us getting started is the most difficult part. So my invitation to you is to set a timer. So you probably have a timer on your phone. And if you promise me that you're not gonna get distracted by turning on your phone, and um, setting the timer, then you can certainly go for it. You could also just use a basic kitchen timer from the kitchen. So we're going to set that timer for that 10 minute window. And I think that's really going to give us a sense of this is what I'm doing, right? 10 minutes on our timer. So we've got 10 minutes to go. And for me, it turns the boring chore of decluttering into a challenge. What can I do before that buzzer goes off? It's also great if you're hoping to inspire others that you share your home with, if you do. And you're like, let's all do 10 minutes and put 10 things in a bag and then we'll have dinner or watch a show or go for a walk or whatever it is we're going to do. And I think also that 10 minute timer gives you a start. It gives you a finish and you never feel like you're leaving the project unfinished, even though it's not completely finished, you're leaving at the end of the time, which feels different. And I certainly move faster. I make quicker decisions when there's a timer ticking down in the background. So we'll want to have a timer. We'll probably want to have a bag or a box, if, especially if you're doing the Kohl's drop off, a box or a bag to add things that you're not keeping. If you have your phone with you, then you'll be able to take photos of anything that you might want to keep the memory without keeping the stuff. So a lot of times with cute items, and I'm going to talk to you about cute in just a little bit, but you know, something cute or some sort of a family treasure that you just know you don't need to keep it, um, it but you feel like I don't want to forget about it. Maybe it's an article of clothing that you wore at a particular time. You're never going to wear it again, but you don't want to forget it. Taking a picture is a great strategy. And then I would just have to maybe invite you to have a pen and paper nearby as well. And that's because as you're working, there's a good chance you're going to inventory things you're putting in the bag or box for donation. You might also be reminded of a task you need to do or something you need to rebuy or replace. Um, so that would be something to, to note so you don't have to try to remember it as you're working. So we've got our timer and our bag or our box. We have our notepad to make a list and we hopefully maybe have something to take a photo, um, especially if it's a memory that we want to remember, but we're willing to let the actual item go. And from there, we're just going to group similar items together from within that space or category. So if you're doing shoes, it's all the shoes. If you have 200 pairs of shoes, then maybe it's all the heels or all the lace up dress men's shoes, or maybe it's all the flip flops, right? So it depends on how much you have in any one category, but we wanna group similar things together. If you are in the hall closet with your winter accessories, you're bringing all the gloves and scarves together, let's say. If you're doing socks in the dresser drawer, it's all the socks together. If it's books, maybe it's all the cookbooks together. Maybe it's not all the books, but it's all the cookbooks or all the travel guides that are kind of outdated. Textbooks, almanacs, encyclopedias, travel guides. Don't forget, betterworldbooks.com. So now that we are able to look at a grouping and see, oh, that's how many water bottles I have? I didn't know. Oh, that's how many I have of that one thing? Now we get to choose. We're shopping our own inventory. We're keeping the items that we use, we love, they're in good condition. But the other stuff, it's broken beyond repair. It just needs to go. We have too many. We don't use it. We don't love it. It's itchy. It's way the wrong size. For whatever reason, it's just not right for you. Into the donations, it can go. From there, we're tossing the items out that need to go, and then we are storing the items that we decided to keep. When we're storing the items, it can be really helpful to add lighting. Lighting. This is battery operated, just regular basic batteries. It's not the, um, you know, sort of the, the coin batteries. It's difficult to know which one. We don't often have them on hand. They do also make these lights in rechargeable if you'd prefer to plug them in to recharge them. They're LED, um, they're super bright, and they actually, uh, some versions have motion activation. So if you're fine with lights coming on, um, when you like open a drawer, open a cabinet, open a closet, the light comes on. And then when you're 
maybe 10 seconds or so, the light goes off. So you don't even have to remember to turn it on and off. But under a sink, back of a closet where it's difficult to see, it's so much easier to keep things organized and be able to find what you're looking for when there's proper lighting. And you don't have to worry about if you're a renter, installing anything, and you don't have to hire an electrician. So lighting, labels, right? So you can use a traditional label maker, or maybe you have you know just a piece of tape and you can use a piece of paper and put a piece of tape over it. You can use blue painter's tape, any kind of tape you'd like to use, um, any kind of label to label things. And that's really helpful because although you may know where things are and where they belong, anyone else that's trying to also keep up with your system will then know where things are located and where they should go back to. And of course, uh, for those of us that are rule followers, the idea that you would want to put it away um, in its proper place because it's labeled, right? So we're less likely to just shove stuff on a shelf or into any random drawer. So lighting, and if you're wondering, well, I want to get a container, but I have no idea what size container. Go ahead and grab your tape measure and then group the items you have into like a pile and measure the pile. And then that will give you the dimensions of the storage space that you need, um, whether you're buying a bin, hopefully you're shopping at home first because probably you have a bin or a basket that you can just repurpose. And then I would also just go ahead and measure the storage space itself maybe the height um, or the depth of a shelf so that you know your storage container is going to fit. So in just a moment, we're gonna kind of go room by room, but hopefully this gives you a sense of sort of those overall steps. And um, I hope you're feeling like, okay, this is doable. Because when we don't have a plan, it's like, I'm not sure what to do, but now hopefully with a plan, you're like, I've got this, I know what to do. All right, so our timer is gonna be ticking away the 10 minutes on the timer and you're beginning in the space of your choosing, which my suggestion was the bathroom. Now, it may have been some time since you've gone through the vanity drawers, your men's shaver kit or your makeup bag. And if you have a vanity that has like an under the sink, oh my goodness, when's the last time we looked under there? So if you'd like to join me now that you kind of know those simple steps, we're not going to take a full 10 minutes of our program because we have so much more to chat about, but we are going to take a teeny tiny moment. You get the whole time. It's three minutes, which I know sounds fast, but I think you'll be surprised at what you can find. We're looking for three things in three minutes to go from that bathroom space. If you're not able to join us in the bathroom, if you can't like get up and go there right now, Maybe you'll take those three minutes and unsubscribe from emails or delete photos from your phone. Digital clutter is a real thing too. But if you're feeling energized and you kind of want to get up and go do a little something with us, you get all three minutes. So there's no race. Don't rush. Walk carefully. And you're going to go to whatever bathroom. Some, you, sometimes you have one. Sometimes you have one and a half or two or more. You're going to choose a bathroom and we're going to one category. So we're looking at maybe that medicine cabinet or the makeup bag, the shaving kit. Maybe you have a bunch of single travel size or freebies that you haven't used. Maybe you just have products that you tried, but you don't like face creams or hair products. How many of us have an extra hair appliance, like one hair dryer we like and one hair dryer we never use? Too heavy, too noisy. It just doesn't work properly. Whatever the situation is, if we don't like it, why are we keeping it? Don't forget about supplements and prescription medications. Of course, always use caution with these. Make sure they're up high. But if it's out of date, if you won't finish it, if you don't need it, why are we keeping it? So you can probably already see there's a lot of things that can head out from that bathroom space. We're looking for nail clippers that don't clip, nail files that don't file, and tweezers that don't tweeze. Anything rusty goes, anything out of date goes. So speaking about out of date, I will give you a very broad umbrella expiration date chart for things in the bathroom. Then we'll have our timer set for just three minutes and you'll get to join us for a teeny tiny tidy up. So in general, liquid eyeliner and mascara typically has a three month expiration date. That's right up against your eyeline. You've contaminated it and put it back in the container. Three months is typically the recommendation. You can always check with the manufacturer to ensure. But a lot of dermatologists, I did a lot of research for my book, talking with doctors and dermatologists. And um, so in that expiration chart, 
three months mascara and liquid eyeliner, six months liquid sunscreen and bug spray, bug spray and liquid sunscreen, SPF. Um, we, we're looking at, at the six month timeline, chemical compounds change, and you're not getting the protection that you probably think you are. And again, you can check, but typically six months. Two more levels, one year, and that's going to be products applied to the face. So generally your powdered um, and your liquid foundations and your blushes and your bronzers and your pencil liners and your pencil brow and um, shaving cream, things like that. Things applied to the face. And then two years, things applied to the body, shampoo and conditioner, nail polish and um, cologne and perfume. So generally a two year window. So now if you're thinking back and you're like, wait, I bought that before we started spending more time at home. And that's like at least what, three years now. So some of this stuff really has to go. And it is disappointing. You spent money on it. You really can't donate it. Um, so it just has to go, but better that it go now, your first aid supplies, right? It's not when you need an antibiotic ointment or a tummy, you know, trouble, you know, something, it's not the time to realize it's out of date. So now's the time to check it. If you'd like to join us, we're looking for three things in three minutes. Again, don't rush. You have all the time in the world to do, walk carefully. We're going to set it in three minutes. Getty, who's, who wants to do this? Give us a yes or a why in the chat if you're ready. We're going to begin in three, two, one, and go. Timer's ticking. And you are looking for three things in three minutes from that bathroom. So many of you are ready to go. We've got Mary and Sherry. You're ready to go. Let's see who else said yes. There's Alicia and Susan. Carol's on it. There's Emily and Carla. Way to go. Two minutes and 44 seconds. Let's do this. Timer's ticking. 30 minutes in, oh, 30 seconds in, two minutes and 30 seconds left. Two minutes to go. You've got this. Two minutes to go. Timer is ticking. One minute and 30 seconds left. You are halfway through. Halfway through. One minute and 10 seconds. Thirty five seconds. Our final twenty seconds. How's it going over there? And we'll count it down together. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and we are done. We're going to hear that chirpy little timer, and it is celebrating our win. So come on back to the program.
Hopefully you didn't dump everything out of a drawer and not have time to put it back. It was the idea of kind of picking out some things. How did it go? Join us in chat if you want to let us know what you found. Timer is up and we're back to our program. How did it go? Oh, yes. Yeah, so long, Kermit the Frog Green Eyeshadow from Julie. Way to go. Fantastic. So these are the kinds of things, right? We're maybe braver when that timer's ticking down and you're like, yeah, you're out of here. Bathroom drawer partway organized. So I'll just remind you, that was three minutes. Three. Imagine if you did 10 minutes. What would that look like? What would change? What would change in the fact that things you're getting rid of in storage spaces so you can put things away? Barbara got rid of those emails. Out, out, out. Carol said old masks and out-of-date COVID tests. Yes. Way to go, everyone. Alicia, exactly. Partway organized. It's fantastic. So we see the progress and the progress can be so motivating. We're like, what else can I do? What's next? Camille did that old makeup. Absolutely. Yeah. Out it goes. So long. I love that. Way to go, everyone. So I love, thank you for those of you that were able to take us up on that little jump start. We want to keep that going. A lot of great questions coming in. We're going to get to a few of them in just um, a moment. And a stack of magazines for Miriam. Way to go. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, right? It feels like everything in the room, everything in the house, everything in the closet. It really, for me, is that sort of like just looking at one category, do a little and a little more. It's not, not going to be perfect. You can always go back and make other decisions about things, but you have to start somewhere. So if it's books and photos and clothes and decorations and umbrellas and light bulbs and tools and non-perishable food and paper goods and ah, right. And you're like, what do I even do? <sighs> Breathe. It's going to be okay. Right. It's, we're going to figure it out. And so maybe we start with gathering decorations over here, tools over here, paper goods and non-perishables over here. And then from there, we pare down each category. So remember, it was room, category, group like together, pare it down, toss what we're leaving. And you might decide more later, but initially what's leaving, then we're storing the keepers. And I think the most important step, which I didn't even tell you yet, is maintaining the newly organized space. So once we've cleared out the bathroom vanity, as new things come in, old things go out so that we don't have to do this over again, which I know some of us feel like we've done it over and over again. Carla had a success, small drawers out, notes and things gone, and some emails too. See, that was three minutes. Just imagine what you're going to see in like 10 minutes a day. Sarah reminds us that bags, the food pantry often needs the bags. So if you have some extras, they'd love to get them. We talked about some resources. Let me give you just a few more. Donationtown.org. Donation town. So the word donation and then town like city, town, T-O-W-N. And that one's a .org, not a .com. Donationtown.org. And that's where you can schedule a pickup with the Vietnam veterans instead of waiting for them to send you the postcard that they're going to be coming around. And then Alicia reminds us that um, you can actually bring your textiles into recycle. So that's a good one as well. If you're looking to recycle textiles and you're like, oh, but wait, you know, uh, what can I do with those? So that's another good resource that's on Hartwell Avenue. And thank you, Alicia, for that resource um, as well. All right. And um, we've got a couple of other thoughts coming in. So let's get to them as we chat along the way. And we talked about the bathroom, but there's so many other spaces. So let's jump in. Kitchen, right? Again, not the whole kitchen. One room. Kitchen. One area of the kitchen. Water bottles, coffee mugs, right? How many coffee mugs? How many plastic just cups do you have? Maybe it's not even cups. Maybe it's food storage containers and matching lids to bases. Maybe it's just spices. So maybe you have some spices left over from a big baking season, finish them up. Spices don't tend to last all that long. You can see the expiration at the bottom. If you have perishable goods in the kitchen, you can check out stilltasty.com and it'll tell you, you don't have to make an account. You don't have to give your email. It's free. Just a search bar, type in what you have, leftover mashed potatoes, unidentified food objects in the freezer. Uh, and they'll tell you how long it's good, even past its expiration date. And that's still tasty, S-T-I-L-L, -L, 
T-A-S-T-Y, stilltasty.com. Now, I know some of us are looking at some things that have some value, so hang on for that one. We've got a lot of other um, resources to share with you, including lexingtonma.gov. So um, right on the government's website, what they've done is to create a list for you, um, specific, of course, to Massachusetts, but it's going to be um, donate, don't dispose. So you can go to www.lexingtonma.gov. And when you get there, there's a search bar, just type in donate or dispose. Either one of those words, it's going to get you to a very long list that is uh, seems to always be being updated. So it'll be a fresh list that is current and it has a very long list of resources for you, including for babies, children's clothes, high chairs and cribs, men's and women's professional clothing, um, solutions at work and dress for success, uh, movies and DVDs and bicycles, building materials, uh, furniture, anyone have furniture you're looking to get rid of? household goods, and um, of course, vehicles as well. And then in addition to donating, there's also resources for the buy nothing um, groups, which is lovely as well. So the exact um, website I can put in the chat for you, but it's a little long to type it in. So you could go ahead and just um, put in, hang on and I'll get that to everyone. There you go. And so you can just do lexingtonma.gov and then search, dispose or donate or you can type in that whole um, amount. So there you go. And uh, yeah, so this, I think it's um, it's actually statewide and some of them are, are national. So I think you'll probably find just what you need there. Uh, Anne's asking about magazines. For magazines, I tend to take them to the laundromat, sometimes senior centers. They'll use them for crafts as will um, art teachers and some daycares. It depends on you know, who the magazine is geared towards, but my laundromat by me there, I just drop them off because people just take them. Um, but magazines is one of the things you can put in the box and drop it off at Kohl's. So there you go. All right. We're going to talk about clothing in just a minute. And we have some questions coming in about things that children left when they moved out. And also if something's valuable, what do I do with it? So let's jump into some other um, areas of the home. We just talked about the kitchen. Uh, of course, there's also the bedroom and the clothing. And so this is the time to just go ahead and take a look at maybe your accessories. How many, you know, sort of costumey pieces, maybe they're tarnished, they are broken, you can't string it back together. It's just not your favorite. You won't wear it for whatever reason. Um, so costume pieces, I mean, how many baseball caps and, you know, keep the favorites, the ones that um, really have washed well, but if they're squashed, if you don't like that team anymore, whatever the situation is, we can say so long, out it goes. Um, socks, single socks. Anyone have still have single socks? My goal is to match all the socks by February, which for me um, is going to be really easy because every time I buy socks, I just buy the exact same athletic sock. So all my socks are matching. So don't even have to match socks. I get like so much time back in my day. It's fantastic. Uh, shoes. So it pinches your toe. It's too high of a heel. It's just not your favorite. Whatever the reason is with shoes, men's, women, and children's shoes are collected for donation to Souls for Souls. Souls for Souls collects shoes and their collection point is located at every single DSW shoe store. So you probably know a local shoe store, let's see, um, right over on Middlesex Turnpike, right? Is that probably convenient for you? It's by the Joann's Crafts on Burlington Ave. Um, there's a DSW there. You can bring in your shoes. If you're a loyalty card holder, they'll give you points for one pair of shoes per day. But you can, drop, you can drop off as many as you like, but you only get points for one pair each day if you have their loyalty card, but you don't have to have it. So DSW for shoes would be a great um, resource. And then clothes. And this one's so tricky because, you know, sometimes we're like kind of between sizes, uh, maybe, you know, up or down. Maybe you didn't have a reason to wear a particular outfit, but you might. And so we have the just in case clothing. But then we also have 22 of a similar, you know, style t-shirt or our favorite kind of thing. But then some of them get worn out. They're just not our favorite anymore. So for clothing that's between sizes, 
sizes. The way I think of it is if it's truly kind of fluctuating, maybe it's like a 10, 12, 14, you know, kind of that range. So anything that's in your closet is recommended to be in style, in season, and in size. So anything that's easily accessible to you in your closet or dresser drawers, in style for you, in size, and in season. If it's a little bit of a size this way or that, right? Um, certainly we want to have access to it. The way I think of it is like back stock, right? So if you go into store and you're like, oh, do you have this in another size? And they're like, oh, let me check the stock room, right? Um, that's where you might have one of those um, storage bags or, or tubs in the closet or towards the bottom of a dresser where it's not the size right now, but you still want to have access to it. But if it's a size that's way over here or way over here that right now, you know, doesn't feel particularly realistic, I think it just serves to feel, make us feel really bad. Clothes don't do well. And someone right now that could use it um, can't because we're keeping it. So I say, let it go. Um, if there's a significant change, you'll probably treat yourself to a new wardrobe anyway, with the exception of anything that's, you know, very expensive or truly a favorite that stores well. And that's the most important part. So hopefully um, I it's such a tricky part, but anything that's in style for you. Um, so it's flattering. You put it on, it's your color. It's, you know, fits well. It's easy to care for. You get compliments. You feel good in it. That's the stuff we want you to have access to. Um, so front and center and don't forget lighting. That's so important in that closet space. So again, it's not the whole closet. It's just the shoes. If you've got a lot of shoes, it's just one type of shoe or, you know, one person shoes. And we just start there. We just have to get started. And we did that already during our time together. And I'm thinking maybe you're looking forward to the next 10 minute window. So is that going to be tonight? Are you going to be emailing me at midnight? Jamie, I love the program. I'm still in my closet. It's going really well. Or are you thinking tomorrow morning? I think the sooner you take that next step, the more success you'll see. If you're like, oh, I'll do it next Monday, oh, I feel like we might be missing an opportunity to really keep that momentum going. And in fact, if you're cleaning out your office supplies and you find some cute stickers or your craft supplies and you find some cute stickers, uh, maybe on a wall calendar, give yourself a sticker for every day you do 10 minutes. And because I would want a sticker every single day and I wouldn't want to miss a day, it'll be 10 minutes to midnight and I'll be doing my decluttering because I wouldn't want to miss giving myself that sticker. Um, plus you use up stickers, so it's a win-win for everyone. All of the resources that I've shared with you and so many more. I mean, honestly, it would be an hour of me just rattling off a very long list of resources. They are in the book, Keep This, Toss That. There are also, um, a, there's a list on my website. There's also a daily tidy on my website. So if you like the idea of kind of organizing with me, there's a Monday podcast and every single day I give you a tiny tidy up and uh, we have a good giggle. So you can print a free calendar and follow along at jamienovak.com. All right, well, let's continue on because we've talked about a few different rooms, but there's still a few left. And of course, I'd be remiss if we didn't discuss paper. So we'll do that in just a minute as well. Um, for your office supplies. So if you have cords and cables, if you have an old printer or an old VCR, um, a computer monitor, something that needs to be recycled, Best Buy and Staples stores, take them um, consumer electronics for recycling for free year round. Staples and Best Buy stores. So the Staples over by the post office in Waytham, um, they'll take them, but any Staples or Best Buy store has consumer electronic recycling for free year round, which is like really helpful. Um, now we're getting some resources that Best Buy charges, which is unusual. I wonder if it happened to be an oversized piece um, because according to corporate and anytime I've ever gone in, um, now UPS has a uh, paper shredding, a dollar per pound, and that might be um, helpful as well. All right, let's talk hobby supplies. Maybe you have paint or glue that's dried up. Um, let it go. If you're not going to make the bracelet with the beads, donate it. Let it go to someone who will. I mean, right? And that's going to free up free up. Now, when we have some of the special items, like maybe you were given an award or you have cute things, plush toys and figurines and such. Remember at the beginning of our time together, my suggestion was you might want to take a picture of it. So you keep the memory without keeping all the stuff, which sometimes can be a good answer. But 
sometimes you're like, well, I would let it go, but what if it has true monetary value? Um, and of course, it may be something that the kids left behind. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. But of course, you can always log on to eBay. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because, you know, anyone can really list anything for sale on eBay. And I'm not suggesting that you're going to sell something on eBay. I'm just saying you could use it as a resource for looking up the, maybe the current value of something. And it's not a definitive guide, but it really can be a good, you know, sort of first look. The challenge is, if I were to look this little guy up on eBay, um, his name is Seaweed, by the way, a little seaweed beanie baby. There are some for 99 cents and there are some all the way up to like $4,000. So when I look at that at a glance, I'd be like, oh, well, maybe I have a $4,000 beanie baby. But then when you look at it a little closer, you realize that's the one that has an error, um, a specific tag. Uh, there's something about it that makes it maybe more collectible. And so if you were to look something on, up on eBay, um, even if you don't know what it is, so you could type in like, you know, um, Beanie Baby, or um, if you didn't even know it was a Beanie Baby, something like, you know, Otter or piece of seaweed, and it would kind of come up for you. Over on the left-hand side of the screen on eBay, scroll down, and one of the check boxes is show sold only. Show sold only. And when you click this, it's going to make a big difference in your results because then it's going to show you which ones sold most recently for exactly how much. And so you'll see that, yes, a few of these have sold in the last week, but they've sold for like $1.99, 99 cents. Um, so it really can give you a much more realistic view of things, which I think is probably really helpful. So if you're going to use eBay as a resource, of course, don't overlook our awesome libraries. They are wonderful resources for looking things up. There are so many reference books to find out your items. So this is really for the valuation of things. So Miriam says, but what about like Craigslist? I mean, you know, of course, I would always want you to use caution. If you were going to sell something on a line and you're meeting the person in person, always do it in a public place. Um, and I wouldn't probably ever go alone. But I, I don't know that you could necessarily use like a Craigslist for researching the value of things, which is why I suggested eBay more so for the researching of the value of things. So I hope that's helpful. But what about the things that kids left behind? Maybe you have children that moved out, they're in college, they're setting up their first apartment, they're married, they're having children of their own, and you still have a lot of their stuff in their room, in storage, in closets, all the stuff. And so... One of the easiest ways, probably, if they're not coming home often, and even if they are home, are they willing to kind of go through the area? Probably not. So if you were to able to, you know, so many of us have the ability to pop on video with family and friends on our phones, um, or to take pictures and show them like, hey, this is what's in your, you know, um, room. This is what's in your drawer. This is what's hanging in your closet. Do you want any of it? And chances are once they have the photos, they're going to go, yeah, no, now I have the memory. I have the picture of it and I don't actually need the cute stuff. And my definition for the word cute, if you read, um, you're going to know this because if you read, keep this, toss that it's in there. Cute, C-U-T-E. I think of it as an acronym and I think it stands for can't use this ever. Can't use this ever. Cute things are often adorable, but they're basically dust collectors. So unless it brings you great happiness to display it and see it and it makes you smile, you remember someone or a particular event, that's the stuff to keep. But if it's just one more cute thing and all the other cute things you have, or and more importantly, just don't bring more cute things home. Cute. Can't use this ever. So if you were to share photos or if you're on video with family and friends, to let them know, hey, look, here's everything that's in this drawer. Do you want anything? And they'll be like, yeah, probably not. You know, um, oh, can you save that or send that to me? And yeah, the rest of it can go. And then they've sort of given you the authority to go ahead and donate or recycle or get rid of. Um, just let it go. And the fact that all the stuff is sitting in our homes and someone's not using it, 
how great that we could share it with someone else, right? That does, they need it, they'll use it. And it gives us that fresh start to the new year. So that's probably one of the easiest um, ways because even if you know children are coming home for the holidays and things, they don't often want to spend a lot of time going through the room. Um, so usually the pictures is a great option and um, hopefully that'll be helpful. All right, well, let's talk papers as we start to wrap up our time together. I can't wait to hear where you're going to begin. I know we already kind of started with a little jump start, but what's next for you? So start thinking about what is your next 10 minute window? When is it going to be? Where is it going to be? Because I'll invite you to go ahead and uh, pop that in the chat towards the end. So hopefully you're feeling excited about your next step. It's feeling doable. Even if you were overwhelmed when you first logged on with us, hopefully you're like, yeah, you know what? I can do this. I'm already doing this. I started during our time together. So if you have a pile of papers, and honestly, who doesn't? This one's probably a little too short. You're like, wait a minute. That's a tiny pile of papers. My paper pile is so much taller and it has all the stuff. It has the ma magazines, right? And so we've got all the magazines. Don't forget, we can look at the magazines at the library. Magazines are available digitally. You might pause a magazine subscription just to see if you miss it. And if you don't miss it, then just don't resubscribe, right? Um, or change the address. So I asked my hair salon, can I send them to you? And they were like, sure. So I changed the address and off they go to the salon. So everyone wins. Then you have the catalogs, the catalogs that promise you, if you don't order, it'll be your last catalog. It's never our last catalog. And so... It, if you're like, yeah, they just keep coming, you can log on to catalogchoice.org, catalogchoice.org, like you're choosing which catalog, it's totally free, and they will unsubscribe you from the catalog mailing list. So that's a big one. Um, if you're just getting a bunch of stuff in the mail that you know you don't want, and then you've got to dispose of the catalog, then it's you know all the wasteful paper printing and all of that. And then for the papers that are probably sitting on your kitchen countertop or your dining room table, out of sight, out of mind. I certainly can't say to you, oh, file them in a filing cabinet, right? Because you need them. They're the recipes that you're never going to prepare like me. It's the prescription for your doctor's appointment in two weeks. It's all the things. And so we need them at our fingertips. So we end up putting them in a pile. My suggestion to you is to consider a desktop file box. This is a box. It sits. It can sit on a desk. In this case, it's going to sit on a countertop or a dining room table or something. It holds hanging file folders, easy to access in and out, unlike a manila file folder, a hanging file folder. And because I know your time is limited and no one has time to make a bunch of labels, we're gonna use a sticky note. Sticky note to the inside back of the file folder and I labeled it in seconds. Um, doctor's appointment on such and such a day. Notes from today's program, organizing notes or you know declutter, whatever that may be right here tax forms that are starting to come in, receipts or bills to be paid, all the other things that you're like, where am I going to put this so I can find it again right here? And then you can move the box as you need your table or you want to chop vegetables on the counter or companies coming, easy to move, take it with you when you're paying bills, put it back when you're done, papers in, papers out, a desktop file box can really replace that pile of papers that so many of us have. So that's a big one. All right. Gosh, we are, I can't believe it. How can it be that we're coming to the end of our time already? This hour just feels like it flew by. Um, I can't wait to hear what was your favorite takeaway? So as we're getting to a last few uh, questions, please do um, jump into the chat if you'd like to and let us know what kind of your favorite takeaway was from our time together this evening. Was there like one tip that stuck for you, one idea, one takeaway? Let us know. Um, Rusty's saying, I made a list of rooms by month and I'm actually like moving through the stuff that way. Um, and it makes it feel doable. I love that. So kind of, you know, sectioning it off and saying, I'm working on this and then I'm working on that. Miriam's loving that 10 minutes. And Joanna says, I just like the whole thing. That file box, Simone is really loving that file box. That was a game changer for me. I've been using that over 20 years and it's such a difference. Oh yes, Emily says 10 minutes, it makes it doable. Miriam likes the 10 minutes as well. It's it, I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Yep, Carol says 10 minutes. Carla, oh, get the 10 minutes. Everyone's loving the 10 minutes. I'm thrilled that you like this idea. That's why I do my podcast in 10 minutes um, because a lot of 
people will tune in on Mondays and listen as a 10 minute timer. So I love this and the feeling that I'm not alone and that I can do this. I'm very excited. Shari says daily deleting of photos. Yes, absolutely. So digital clutter is a real thing. You can log into your photos, search for the photos just by using the date. So let's say you put in January 8th. It's going to show you pictures you took on January 8th of every year. And you can do just January 8th. Then tomorrow, just you know delete some from January 9th and so on and so on. And if you do that for one full year by the end of the year, as long as you delete as you go new photos you take, which is that whole maintaining thing, um, your you know gallery will be cleared out, which is fantastic. Now, um, there's a question in the chat. And so I know some of you are saying, but you know, this all sounds great. Um, if on the day I'm feeling physically well, I, you know, um, have the ability to, you know, kind of work, but sometimes that's not the case. Uh, broken arm, feeling a little blue, um, have some uh, a disability uh, for whatever reason, right? Something may be in the top shelf of a closet and we're not taking that down. We don't want, we always want to organize safely. So, you know, how can I maybe uh, get someone to assist in this way? I would look for a declutter buddy. Um, sometimes there are scouting troops and sometimes through the department of, um, seniors and aging with the town. And of course our awesome libraries may have resources or help you research this. Uh, but sometimes scouting troops may have a scout that needs some uh, volunteer hours. Um, other times there are, you know, resources through the department of aging and senior services where they have volunteers that can come. For example, Habitat for Humanity, they have a resource where if you have a, a safety issue in your home, they have volunteers that can come and remedy that for you. They're not just gonna kind of like paint your room, right? But if you have a security issue. Um, so it can be such a challenge if you're feeling unwell or you you know, don't have you know all the the day to to work on things, but there are resources, and it's just a you know kind of re reaching out to find them. But a declutter buddy is great as well. Um, a neighbor, a coworker, a very um, kind family member, um, someone who says, "I also want to get organized this new year, and let's be declutter buddies together, right?" And so I'll come and help you, and then you know you can uh, help me or you know encourage me. And so um, there's definitely someone out there. Don't give up hope if you're looking for someone to guide you. Um, so that's lovely. Well, it looks like we have a few live questions. As we wrap up our time together, a big thank you to Helen for putting this whole thing together and uh, inviting me to join you. Of course, to the Cary Library and the Cary Library Foundation for making our program possible. This program was recorded and will be available to you for 30 days. And um, that's because if we tell you it's available forever, you would probably say you'll listen to it later and then later never happens. But when you've got 30 days, we tend to make it happen. So you can play it as you're doing your next organizing. And we're going to have an opportunity to um, let anyone who has an, a live question be able to unmute their microphone and ask. Um, thank you so much, everyone. It was such a delight. I, I'm reading all the lovely comments. I'll continue to read the chat as we get to any live questions. So Helen, take it away. Great, thank you. So I'm going to unmute Anne, and uh, Anne, if you have your question, you can speak. I'm fine, <laughs> thank you, I, I, I'm fine. Okay, all right, so now we'll unmute Pat. Hi Pat, go ahead. Okay, well, Pat might not be available right now, so we can continue with the other questions we might have had. Let's see if we have any more in chat. And when we're looking for any questions that we may have overlooked, I see all the delightful comments. I'm so thrilled that you enjoyed our time together, everyone. Uh, I just can't wait to hear about your next success. So please do find me on social media or send me an email. I love getting success stories. So I will be waiting on you. Camille, it looks like you're looking about old maps and where you could sell them. Um, old maps are very collectible. A lot of people use them um, in crafting and things. So um, it depends on how you feel about um, 
you know, listing things online, but I would say Poshmark is probably the easiest and would be the one to maybe try. So you can download the app Poshmark, P-O-S-H-M-A-R-K, Poshmark, P-O-S-H-M-A-R-K, Poshmark. Um, and that would allow you to then create an account. Poshmark is going to take 20% of the sale, but they're going to do like all the work. The buyer pays the shipping. So basically you'll just have to take at least one picture of the maps and um, then just describe what the maps are and you're all set. So um, yeah, that's what I would say. Of course, there are, you know, the online groups and things like next door neighbor, but always use caution if you're doing an in-person um, exchange would be my suggestion. So Poshmark is, it looks like a lot of people have things to sell. So um, yeah, that seems like a part two, <laughs> but um, wonderful. Kara, let's see, Helen, what do you think? There's a question in the Q&A. Can you revisit the answer to, I have an entire basement filled with books, photos, clothes, Christmas decorations, seasonal decorations, umbrellas, tools, light bulbs, non-perishable food and paper items, et cetera. I'm overwhelmed and about lots and lots of paperwork to file for work. Oh my goodness. Gosh, that just sounds so relatable. Thank you for being so honest and just saying, look, this is where I'm at, right? I think that's the first step is just being really honest about I'm I'm kind of stuck. I'm overwhelmed. And you're certainly not alone. We have like 150 attendees and I think everyone would be nodding their head to, oh yeah, I definitely get this. So I think one of the biggest takeaways that everyone had and, and what goes particularly back to this question is small steps. We cannot do it all at once. That's quite a few different categories. And um, so to me, I feel like if I could find some umbrellas, and then one in the car, one in the closet, and then donate some umbrellas. And at least I feel like I had gotten started. And if things are in a storage space, attic, basement, garage, um, if you can bring a handful of things up to work in a common area, then you don't feel like you're within all the other storage space and you don't feel like you're not making progress because you look around and there's so much more. So if you just bring some stuff up and work on it with the idea that it gets done, nothing just sits in a corner upstairs, if that makes sense. Um, but it's the same steps. It's grouping similar things together, all the umbrellas, all the holiday decorations, and then paring it down. What are my favorites? Can I take some pictures? And then letting some stuff go and storing what you're going to keep. Clearly label storing what you're going to keep. Um, I think that's really important. Um, yeah, it, it can feel so overwhelming, but the good news is, you know, you can do it. So small steps. And there was a question, Helen, earlier um, that I noted, and I, I think we'll just go back to it. The lighting itself, um, I, uh, well, just about anything's available from Amazon. So at jamienovak.com, there's a link to my favorites and you'll see the actual ones that I use. Um, but any store, you know, I would just look at the reviews. You can usually get a pack of three for like $25. So you'll know that's about the right price point for them. Reusable or battery operated. Um, and then Helen, you probably saw this one too. Um, address how to maintain. Oh, it's such a good question. And we talked kind of about that one in, one out. As you bring something new in, something goes out. We're working little by little by little. Um, so it's just keeping the momentum going. We're avoiding bringing home cute. Uh, we're not saving things that you know need to be recycled or truly are trash. And so I guess it's maybe really being a very ruthless gatekeeper about what comes through your front door, because each and everything you bring home, you have to then make a decision about store, get it out of your home again. So I think the maintenance is just maybe being very clear about what comes home and then working continuously, right? Because just as soon as you go through the house, something new will need to be looked at again. Uh, but in these little bits, I think it's much more manageable. So I hope that helps us to maintain. My favorite saying comes from my mom and it says, don't put it down, put it away. And that's my way of maintaining. Um, don't put it down, put it away. And Marion's asking about the stuffed animals and probably just about anything else. Does it need to be cleaned or laundered before it is donated? And it does not. Even if you go through the trouble of doing that, they're probably going to do it again on their side um, just for so many precautions. So, um, yep, right into the box it goes and uh, sounds like over to Coles. Shelly reminds us that Savers takes toys as well. That is another great resource. So, so many awesome resources from everyone um, this evening. Thank you so much. Is everyone ready to go set a timer for 10 minutes and uh, go get started? Is that the plan? Yes. 10 minutes. Okay. I'm excited. Helen and the foundation, Carrie Library, and each and every one of you, 
Thank you so much for um, being a part of our program this evening. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jamie. Um, I think everyone has some wonderful tips and can start setting that timer for 10 minutes of like mini decluttering. Thank you everyone for joining us and thank you again, Jamie. Have a good night, everyone. So long, happy organizing. Cheers to a clutter-free 2024.